Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I have a great one for the newer growers to figs. This is like the nine biggest reasons or like the nine sins that we can commit with our fig trees. And these nine reasons pretty much as a whole wrap up every reason why you could fail. Um, I personally think Growing figs and successfully fruiting them is actually quite easy compared to a lot of other fruit trees. Uh, it's very easy, I think. There's not a whole lot that bothers them. So if you kind of just avoid these nine things that I'm going to mention in this video, you should have a successful season or at least marginally successful. Um, so number one, the biggest thing that I think people do with their container fig trees is that they don't feed them. Um, any container fruit tree needs a lot of food. We only have so much soil in a pot and we only have so much nutrients in a pot. So if we're not every year supplying nutrients to our fig trees, we're going to have an unsuccessful crop. We may, our trees may not grow all that much. And if they don't grow all that much, then we're not going to get the fruits because a lot of our fig trees are fruiting on the new growth that comes out every spring. And then the fruits form on that new growth. That's called the main crop. So if we don't have adequate growth by giving our trees the right amount of nitrogen, that's what promotes growth, then we won't have figs, right? But if we give our trees, let's say, too much nitrogen, so there's kind of a, a little bit of a caveat here, then we may have our tree... Uh, set into kind of like a hormonal imbalance and we may not get any fruit at all and all we may get is actually leaves that year so it's a bit tricky but you need to play with in the spring I what I do is I give my trees and we have many videos on fertilizing these trees guys we do four feedings in the month of May and that's it I stop after that um, this year I may do a little bit more into about mid-May and continue that on. Uh, maybe I'll do six feedings. At the most, I would do eight. But it's just a once-a-week liquid fertilizer, and it's really any fertilizer you want, organic, inorganic. It's just that there's different requirements for organic versus inorganic. The synthetic fertilizer is just pretty much instant, instant food. And um, you just have to be careful with the amount of nitrogen that you're giving your tree. That's really all it is. Um, it's pretty much foolproof if you just feed your tree um, four feedings a year in the spring. You are setting yourself up pretty well for the entire year. It's something I do every spring without fail. Um, hormonal imbalance. This is uh, kind of leading into what we just talked about in that there's a number of ways we can put our tree into a hormonal imbalance where the tree just wants to grow and grow and grow and not fruit. One of which, as I mentioned, partly is due to too much nitrogen. Um, sometimes our trees just may be too young and they're not really in that right balance just yet. Um, other times we may prune our trees too heavily. If we cut back our trees too much, they may respond and they often do respond especially depending on the variety but overall they don't respond well to a hard pruning um, the following year they kind of revert back to a weird state and they want to just grow and they don't fruit um, so be careful with your pruning we've done many videos on pruning um, another big one is the improper soil moisture and it really all starts with your soil um, if you have the right soil moisture you're going to have also not only a healthy plant, but the highest quality fruits possible. Also, if we're watering our trees too much, they have a tendency to grow too quickly. So, And then that also contributes potentially to a hormonal imbalance. Um, so it really starts with the soil first. You know, If you're growing them in the ground, uh, you may want to amend your soil. They are widely adapted to a number of soil types, but for the most part, a sandy loam is really good. Even sandy soils are really great. Um, you just have to watch out for root knot nematodes. That could be a big failure. Uh, a lot of figs are very susceptible to root knot nematodes. So if you live in the south, that could be a big issue. Or a sandier soil, that could be a big issue. Um, clay soils are also okay. 
It's just that they hold a lot of water and sometimes that there could be too much water and you may split the fruits, lower the quality of the fruits, et cetera, et cetera. It, so it's the same thing in a pot, but even worse because the moisture in a pot is very easily swayed in either direction. Um, it gets very dry quickly and it gets very wet quickly. So we always want it moist, the soil in our pots, and we want to achieve that perfect soil moisture of moist consistently. If we have consistent soil moisture wherever we're growing fruit, we're going to have higher quality fruits. We're going to have less issues with our fruits. But I would I would wait on the caution of a little bit on the drier side, you know. I'd rather have things a little bit on the drier side than on the wetter side. So um, that's a big tip. Um, another one that we can and happens a lot every single year is um, getting our figs to wake up too early. And some people do this on purpose where we wake them up, let's say, in February and it's still very, very cold outside. Um, you know, people do that here with like the help of a greenhouse. And I tell you, the benefits are just not really all that great. Metabolically, our trees need a, I would say, a good resting period. So a good dormancy period is really highly recommended. So don't try to bring your tree in through the winter time and keep it awake all winter. Let it go dormant. Put it outside. Even right now, we're in January, but you could very easily get it um, dormant if, it, if you didn't let your tree go dormant. It doesn't take very long. And also, uh, you know, you, your tree can wake up very quickly after a very short dormancy process. So I would just recommend overall doing that, letting them go dormant. That's a big tip. But also a lot of us will bring them somewhere and try to wake them up early either on purpose, also a bad idea, but sometimes and often more to the point of this particular bullet point here is that people do it by accident and they just don't store their potted figs in the right location. Um, so when we store our fig trees, our container fig trees that is, you know, people are putting them in too warm of a location in their house, maybe in their basement, maybe their garage gets too warm. You need to keep the temperatures in your storage area below 50 at all times. And even at 50 is kind of pushing it. Um, if you have 50 for an extended period of time, that's not really that great. Uh, and they're going to think about waking up. And if they wake up in a scenario where there's no natural light and you just have grow lights, that's also not great. And that kind of leads us into the next point here is that if your tree is waking up not in natural light, in full sun outside, our trees need to have an adjustment period. Even if my trees wake up in my greenhouse, I have to adjust them to the natural sunlight outside because even the greenhouse is letting in less light, less of those UV rays. So we have to be very careful, just like us, but plants more to more to more to that extent that they get kind of shocked by a change in environment, whether that's a change in sunlight, the amount of sunlight, the strength of the sunlight, um, you know, the change in humidity. Um, there's a number of different things, things like wind. Um, but the sunlight is the biggest one I think that we can fail with here. Uh, wind I think is a is a really good one to watch out for. But definitely the the sunlight. If we put our tree in a that our tree's awake in a low light environment, we put it into a high light environment. We pretty much will burn the tree, and that really puts you back for the entire season. It really gets you off to the start of the year that you didn't want. So, big recommendation. Um, then when we get them outside, uh, we need to do a couple of things. One, we should really warm up the soil, regardless if it's in a pot or in the in the ground really warming up the soil, treating these plants like they're melons or treating them like they're tomatoes or eggplants, peppers, heat. They really love the heat and that those soil temperatures really go a long way metabolically. And that's kind of why there's not really a great benefit to keeping them indoors all winter because they don't really have the soil temperatures to really do much. So it's important, I think, in the spring, regardless of where you live, try to help heat up the soil. You're going to have a a much earlier crop, a more successful crop. Um, it's just overall a better thing to do. 
Um, of course, you don't want the soil temperatures too high. If they get above 95, uh, you need to start cooling down the soil by adding in things like mulch and maybe watering a bit more. But uh, another big one that people do in the spring that's a kind of a mistake is they don't up pot their tree. If you have a small tree, it needs to go in a larger pot as soon as possible. Um, really getting them to root themselves out in that pot really puts them on a successful track for that year and they actually should fruit for you. Um, and I would even bet more so than if they did if they were in a smaller pot. And a smaller pot will get you the fruit probably quicker, but you won't have the the number of fruits that you're you're probably going to get if you up pot it into a larger pot. Um, that's a big one. It's a big time saver in terms of just getting your tree to maturity quicker overall to be productive, more productive in the long run. It has access to more nutrients, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Also the form of our tree. So we need to make sure that we are setting our trees up for success from the beginning. And that really comes down to the form up potting them, feeding them, um, giving them all, all that heat. It really does go a long way towards the end of the season. The form is really important. You basically want a tree form for a container fig, but also an in-ground fig in a warmer location. If you have a cold location, like where I live, zone seven, anyone in zone seven or below, you guys should be growing them as a bush um, simply due to the fact that there's going to be some dieback year to year and it's going to be very difficult to maintain them as a tree. Um, so that's a big tip. Um, and then also kind of, you know, to touch on that a little bit more is rejuvenation pruning or even a form of hard pruning. Uh, we can get our trees off to a really nice start from the beginning by simply pruning them very hard. They will come back the following year very vigorously. It puts them in a hormonal imbalance, so it's not good in terms of that, but you actually have a tree that's extremely healthy, getting off on the right foot. It builds character from the beginning, basically. Um, and it goes a long way, you know, years from now that you did this in the first couple of years. Um, so the next thing here, and I think the last, well, actually there's two more. So one of them that we drive home all the time, we talk about so many varieties that exist. It's just so important. Having the right genetics from the beginning is so, so important. You're going to have just all the characteristics you're looking for. Why spend five, six years growing a fig that then you find out is really not optimal in your climate? There's so many varieties out there, like I said, that exist that there are some that are far superior to others in terms of flavor, how they perform, you name it, everything. Um, so it, there's a big difference between some figs that are grown in dry climates and humid climates. Those are really the big two categories that I would place them in. Also, when do they ripen? You know, I think that's a really good one as well. Um, so not only how well do they do with moisture, how well do they do with really hot, dry temperatures, but also, um, you know, when do they ripen for someone like me or a lot of us who are in shorter season climates, you know, figs are a fall fruit technically. So if we don't have varieties that ripen a bit earlier, we're not going to get any fruits at all in our season. So it's, it's really important to choose the right genetics from the beginning. If you want big figs, you need a variety that has, you know, the genetics to create a big fig, you know, you want a fig that doesn't split. You want a fig that doesn't spoil. Um, you want a fig that's productive. Um, you know, that's really where all those genetics come in. And then the last point here I want to make is that a lot of us pick our figs too early. We do everything right. We spent years and, and lots of money and time getting our fig trees to this perfect moment where we can pick the fruit. And what do we do? We pick it too soon. And it's really a disservice that you're doing to yourself because, again, we spent all that time and energy and money. But you know, you're doing this for an experience. You're doing this for a high quality piece of fruit. And if you're picking them too soon, 
the flavors just haven't developed. So would I recommend just wait for the neck to be very soft. It should be drooping quite a bit. Um, and it's really in that neck. The bottom, it ripens from the bottom up. So if you feel the bottom of the fig, that may seem ripe, but the neck doesn't. So check the neck. That's when you know it's ripe. That's when you know it's going to be perfect. You'll get a feel for it as time goes on. But the flavors of the fig doesn't really develop you know, until it's perfectly ripe. Every day that the fig hangs on the tree and has the ability to hang on the tree without something getting it, maybe it's a bird or a critter or an insect, um, you know, and it doesn't spoil, it doesn't mold, it doesn't split, you're further intensifying and really increasing the bricks in those fruits. And uh, for me, I think that's where the money's at. I really do. So, yeah. Um, I want to thank you guys here for watching this one. If you got something out of this, let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, check us out on Figbit. We still have some cuttings available for sale. What we're going to do, a little announcement here, we're going to have a, a sale. Um, we're doing 30% off. So out of all the buy it now cutting varieties and sets of cuttings that I have for sale, we are going to sell them for 30% off. You just have to message me before you pay. You can buy them, you can purchase them and set them aside, but don't pay. And then message me on Figbid the code, the promotional code Ross, and I will adjust the invoice to 30% off. Uh, we're trying to basically get rid of all the cuttings in our fridge um by the 15th of january that's the goal so we have two weeks left hopefully we can make this happen uh thank you guys for watching we'll see you guys soon and uh yeah see you for tomorrow's video